Hey everyone, Cynix here, and I'd like to welcome you to the first episode of Design Lab. So, in this episode, I'm going to be trying to create an interesting design based on this topic of two-legged mech. Um, and each episode is going to be divided into two parts. The first part is just ideas, and the second part is just going to be refining one specific idea. And these are going to be spread out so you can give your input on which idea you want me to refine and stuff like that. And basically just any input you might have before this second step uh, to make it more dynamic and interesting than one person's own perspective would allow. So for this first episode, I'm going to be using a simple scratch board tool to be doing my um, idea process. And uh, just to kind of go over this tool, you may notice uh, the cursor here. It's like a flat line. So the brush has a shape, which is basically a, you know, a flat shape. And the thing about Painter is it actually tries to dynamically follow um, the shape with the direction you're traveling in your stroke. So for instance, uh, the flat angle would travel this way um, if I was moving the brush that way or the angle would turn and be facing that way if I was moving the brush this way. And let me show you what I mean. You can see it's flat that way, and it's flat this way, or flat that way, or flat whatever way I want it to be. Uh, but there's an, also an interesting kind of dynamic to this, and that is if you're just holding it still, it doesn't know which way to uh, direct the brush so that's how you get all these weird like circular shapes because it's kind of spazzing out and trying to figure which direction you're going in and uh, all that stuff so you kind of create some interesting kind of shapes and uh, effects just by kind of dabbing the brush and doing stuff like that and uh, some people have been complaining about painter and that this kind of brush, uh, this aspect of the brushes kind of makes it a little annoying because you get these kind of round shapes when you don't want them and stuff like that. Uh, but I enjoy it because it kind of creates this random aspect that is difficult to control and it usually makes you make shapes and objects that you otherwise wouldn't be trying to make. So that's always a good thing. So anyway, let's just jump right in and start doing some designs. Now, for the designing phase, I'm actually going to be doing post-commentary, um, just so I can speed them up and edit things out, and it lets me concentrate more on making some interesting designs, because uh, I have trouble doing that when I'm trying to talk at the same time. Uh, talking might be okay for rendering and stuff like that, but for like designing and anything that requires like some creative thinking, it's, it's better to just concentrate on it and not be distracted by anything. So for this first two-legged mech, you can see it kind of has a double-jointed uh, leg aspect where it comes down into, I'll call it a knee, and then it goes back up um, into the back, and then it comes down into the, like, the rest of the leg. And that's kind of a design that's based a lot on like animal legs, such as, you know, like a dog or a cat or whatever. Um, where basically, and basically even people too, think about it like standing on your tiptoes, uh, where just your toes would be that bottom part and then the rest of your foot would be that long, that long upward part, that's like the bottom of the leg. Uh, but it's important to kind of have an idea of different mechanical things and how they could be formed and how they could work and stuff like that. So I'll just number that, number one, and I'm going to try to keep these numbered just so they're easier to reference so you're not trying to describe them. and. Uh, like weird ways like oh I like the one that's whatever and it has like two legs and all that stuff so I'm just gonna keep them numbered just to keep it nice and simple anyway for this second one since the first one was kind of spread out in its design and there's like chunks here chunks there some thin legs and stuff like that I wanted to make this one more like rounded and compact where the arms and everything and everything's kind of compacted into this nice round area and I'm giving he's, him these big kind of uh, sizable hands, kind of like big claw things, and uh, there's some shapes on like shoulder pads and stuff like that. Um, but it's, it's kind of good to note that I'm not actually showing what parts of the design are paneling and what parts are actually empty space, as in you're seeing behind the object. 
Uh, but I guess that's kind of up for you to interpret. But I certainly have an idea in my head. Like, for instance, all those parts in the middle and the shoulder pads and even the parts on the hand, uh, those parts that are clear, they're actually meant to be paneling and uh, and not to see through space. So don't think of it as empty space. It's you got to kind of picture the paneling in your head. So that was number two, and I kind of threw in some little, like, antenna things on the side. I don't like to do heads on my robots. I don't know. That's just kind of a personal thing. I, but I feel like it kind of ruins some kind of the aspect. And it also takes away a lot from uh, how freely you design stuff. Because if you start putting on a head, then you start feeling like you need to make it more human in shape. Whereas if you don't have a head, you can really focus on, like, basic shapes and experiment with all kinds of weird arms and legs and things and not have to worry about how human it looks. So for this one, it's kind of got the similar legs to the last one, but they're basic legs. There's like no drill joints and it kind of has that long front forward part and a couple um, kind of wings coming up, but there's no real arms. There could be some little like hint at arm joints, but uh, that's about it. And now I drew some little thumbnails just to kind of get my brain working on this next section trying to think of ideas and stuff like that um so for this first one for this first one i noticed that the legs on basically the first three i did were all kind of thin so to mix that up i want to do some thicker legs and stuff like that and i'm not a big fan of like having thicker heavier mechs and stuff like that with the thick legs and whatnot but it's always good to at least try it so a lot of times when i'm trying to come up with different designs I'm usually taking something that I already made and looking at it and then saying, okay, that has this aspect, such as the thin legs. So the next one I do, I want it to have thick legs or something that's different than that, uh, just so I get a nice variety of stuff. So I try to break things up like that, and that's kind of the only, the only goal I had in mind when I started this particular one. And uh, I guess it's worth pointing out that I didn't actually know at all what I was going to draw when I started doing these. I didn't like plan anything out. I just kind of went at it making random shapes and hoping good stuff would come out. And aside from deleting a couple things that were kind of boring and meandering, I'm pretty happy with how things went. They're okay. I'm not super excited about any of the designs, uh, but you know, they're solid enough. You can see this one, it's kind of, there. this one, there's not paneling in this one. There's a lot of empty space, uh, such as above the torso and in the arms. That's supposed to be empty space. Uh, so you can kind of picture that on your own. But this one's supposed to be kind of very exoskeleton-y. You can picture maybe a guy in there somewhere piloting it. Uh, but I wanted to have that exoskeleton feel with lots of bars and kind of exposed things instead of being enclosed in like a tight uh, packaged up kind of uh, armor and stuff like that. So I wanted it to, be, it to be very exposed and fun like that. So, let's see, what else do we got? Moving on to number five, I kind of wanted to do these chicken leg things where they're really fat and they have like these fat thighs that just go backward and then thin little bottom legs. Um, so once again, mixing it up, this time I wanted fat on the top and thin on the bottom. And I wanted to keep the torso to be like this really kind of simple, small shape. So you can see I'm just kind of going with like a cockpit or a chair. Uh, I don't know if that reads to you, but that's kind of what I was thinking in my head. And if you picture something different, that's okay. You can tell me about it, and maybe the thing you pictured is pretty interesting itself. Um, and that's kind of the fun part about this, is you'll probably picture something else. So you can see there's like a chair there, and there's not really much going on today. It's basically like a chair with two big legs, so I decided to just throw some other stuff on top, like a giant kind of mechanical canopy thing. And then I kind of started changing the design up and stuff. And these things just kind of evolve as I go along. Like uh, the design can change completely uh, with a couple brush strokes and not be at all what I intended when I started with. But uh, that's kind of the fun of it. And this is a lot of fun. I would say this is kind of the best uh, aspect of drawing is where you just get to kind of come up with fun things. And I certainly enjoy it. I can just sit around making shapes and picturing things in the shapes for hours on end. Uh, it's very enjoyable and a lot of fun. So, um, while I'm talking about seeing things in the design, I'd like to thank you guys for commenting on the design theory videos with what you saw in the designs. Uh, it was kind of fun to read them, and every time I've watched that video, I actually see a bunch of different things in the loose shapes, so it's kind of fun like that. 
Um, I think one of the key factors in seeing different stuff is our concept of scale when we look at these random shapes. Uh, so some people might just see like a person or other people were seeing like an actual city. So you can see there was a wide range of scale. And when I usually draw little shapes, I'm actually usually just seeing like stuff that's this scale, like a mechanical scale, like a big robot or a vehicle or something, like, stuff like that. So that's usually what I'm looking for. So anyway, I did that one mech with the chicken legs and I wanted to do another one with those similar legs. So you can see I started this one out with these big thigh things once again and it comes back into that other joint once again one of those double jointed legs um, I don't know if there's a good term for that uh, type of leg but it's kind of a fun one to do when you're doing mechanical stuff it makes it less human-y and it also makes it feel very agile like there's a lot more movement that could be going on and it might be more fun to look at if you were going to say animate this stuff or whatever um, so, another thing that I like to do, and I noticed that this was way too big, so I'm going to be shrinking it down in a second, uh, but something I like to do is I make a shape, and then as soon as I visualize something within that shape, whether it's a leg, an arm, some kind of shoulder, uh, whatever it might be, then I try to repeat that shape in a different perspective to give it some symmetry and it also kind of makes the shape read better so I started with that one leg on the side but you might not know what it is it could be a body it could be anything but then I put the other leg on and I try to kind of match the the proportions and everything of the other one and suddenly you're like oh those are two legs now it suddenly makes a lot more sense so that's that's kind of a technique I always like to be doing when I'm kind of making these shapes so I start out with very random loose shapes and then I try to repeat those shapes in different perspectives and that's how I kind of form these weird like uh, designs and things like that. So once again this mech is looking very kind of exoskeleton-y, very mechanical. I threw in those large kind of, they could be radar things on tops of the shoulders, uh, kind of those like round radar dishes. And you can see, I was kind of picturing like there was a guy, maybe there would be like a guy in the middle part of a cockpit. Then there's two like metal bars that come around. They're kind of rounded around. Then the arms are just like two huge claw thingies with like very narrow claws and simple things. So that's going to be number six. And you can see for some of these, I'm actually throwing the numbers right in on top of the design. And that's to kind of play with the design more. You might as well, you're going to put numbers in. You might as well use them for something interesting. So I'll just put them right in the design and make them part of the design. So for this one, I wanted to do something a bit simple again, a bit more compact. Uh, so it's kind of like a stubby little person with legs. Uh, it kind of looks like a short little robot. You can see it being like something tiny with just... Not much details, very simple silhouette, but that's good. You want to get some stuff that has a very definite and simple silhouette and some, some stuff that's a lot looser. So I went from something kind of crazy to something very definite with number seven. And now I'm going to go back out with something more looser and kind of more thin and wiry and all that good stuff. So I don't remember what I was thinking with this one. I think I wanted to do something that was very vertical. Um, so lots of like tall uh, shapes, lots of vertical stuff. So I kind of gave it these long legs and these long wing things for like a body. And I wanted to give it super long arms, super thin arms. I've been doing a lot of arms that have like thick or big uh, like hands and things like that. So I just wanted to do little like hands and things, a bit really long arms that almost go all the way to the ground. And it's okay. I wouldn't say that's my favorite one, but it could be. You never know what it might turn into. So that was number eight. We're rounding them out. I think I do ten all together, so nice even number. And uh, sometimes you might like a design as it's in the process stage, and I might change it away from what you liked. Uh, so you can always just comment on an actual time um, in the video. Say, like, oh, I like the design that was at like five minutes and 36 seconds or whatever. And that'll be a fun way to discuss things. So anyway, for this one, I had the idea of kind of like these junkyard robots, or it's kind of like an old timey Transformers actually, because I started drawing like a car body. Uh, I don't know if it reads well with those two bright, like round headlights and then the windshield. And then I put the doors as like shoulder blades coming out of the side. 
and then like I kind of detached the body. I'm kind of trying to break it up a bit into mechanical parts to make it look kind of junkyardy, kind of like a transformer. So you can see the front bumper is like a metal front bumper. I actually put that lower on the body where it's like in the midsection. And then lower in, I'm kind of like dropping like broken axles and stuff, and I'm putting the wheels as the hip bones. So those brown shapes you see down there, they're, they're supposed to be like hip bones. Those are the wheels actually in my head. Um, obviously you can see them differently. Uh, but since this was kind of an old timey automobile and stuff, I wanted to make a lot of kind of simple, very square, very rigid shapes that feel like they would belong on an old automobile. So you can see these legs, they're like two like four by fours of iron or something like that. Just like simple flat shapes. Um, yeah, and with some some accents in the knee area and at the top, but I wanted to keep them nice and simple. And for the arms, I'm just keeping them thin up top, but I'm doing fat forearms and, once again, kind of claw shapes. Uh, I usually don't do many, like, hand shapes, but uh, that was something I noticed, and I tried to do some, like, more hand-looking stuff in the next one. So I'm kind of happy with this one. I think it would, it might be fun to flesh out more. It's kind of got that fun little look. You can kind of picture colors and stuff already. So that's number nine. It's kind of old junkyard robot. Uh, kind of like a medieval transformer. Not medieval transformer, but like a 1920s transformer. So there you go. I always like those old Transformers more than the new ones that are very kind of loose. Although I like them too, but I wish there was some stuff that looked more like that, where it's just kind of like simple and it's very obvious that it's still like a... turns into a car or whatever. So for this one, I wanted to do some more of these fat legs again, which I am totally neglect in most of my art, and I wanted to make it kind of bulky in the body as well. Uh, so while I'm noodling with that, I guess this will be a good time to kind of talk about what I hope to go with from here. And I'm kind of hoping in the video comments, uh, people could talk about uh, what designs they like or what they might want to see fleshed out. And then in part two of these videos, which will probably be like a week away or whatever, after I've uh, got some of your feedback, I'll flesh one of these out and try to render it into a more finished design. Not super finished and super polished just kind of like speed paint level of design so let's see there's this one it's kind of bulky you can see that circle on the side actually just started as like an empty space and i saw that it kind of looked like a circle so i matched that circle with a circle on the other side and that's just kind of how these ideas develop so for this one obviously the last one had thin upper arms fat lower arms this one's gonna have fat upper arms thin lower arms and it's gonna have more like hands um, kind of like something you would see in Ashley Wood kind of hands where they're kind of thick and fat and wide. And I was trying to think if I could put something above, um, like a gun or something, but instead I just decided to put these little antenna things again, like little reflectors. I don't know what they are. It's just kind of fun to look at. So that was number 10, and that is it for this video. Whew, that was a lot of talking. It, my throat is all dry now. That went a lot faster than I thought it would with those 10 designs. I thought I'd have to speed it up just to make myself have enough to say, but actually I find myself not really getting to talk about each one as much as I would have wanted. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching, and be sure to talk about uh, design stuff and what you might see and things you might picture. And maybe in the future I'll block out the things that I visualize as panels versus empty space because that can kind of be confusing for some people. But hopefully you kind of made sense of it on your own.